This video is brought to you by Empower, which brings you business power for your fitness industry. Use the code ROKAS upon registration to receive a special discount. I have my, my partner ready. I'm ready. Do you think there's anything that you could guide us so through to try So if you just um, get him to throw, let's say, a jab at you a few times, and I can look at some of the ways you're reacting, and then we can talk about what strategy you want to achieve. You don't want to be all tensed and tight and nervous and closing your eyes and moving more than you need to and that's only going to come through repetition no gloves up to you so it's a quicker way of learning if you get hit without gloves okay that that's good i, I like learning quick <laughs> oh i'm so not used to this but that's the whole point that's why how can you deal with it in a ring or against someone who's used to punching if you're not used to being punched at matthew has to aim for your face i just try to that's good that's okay. it so Now start moving around the room a little bit. Don't stay in the same place relative to each other. Change your angles and don't get in a rhythm of throwing jab, jab, jab. He's got to make it a bit more random now. Very good, very good. You can see if you can make your movements a little bit smaller. So it's the, the jabs are still not landing on you, but instead of moving 12 inches away from it, you just move one inch away from it, for example. Got it. Okay. If you hit me, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. The so, basics, uh, but the basics are often overlooked. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's crazy. That's what I realized going through the process that we don't do these things and then they're so foreign in Aikido. There's these punches where they stop and nothing happens and you do your stuff and you kind of think, okay, so I'm going to be used to punches, but it's, it's just different. So let's say now you've got a specific strategy in mind. What would you like to do when you yeah. attempt a jab? What, how could you incorporate one of your Aikido techniques into his jab. My biggest mistake was I was going for the wrists in, uh, in the match that I did uh, in the sparring and obviously that doesn't work, I learned that. I discussed with some people and there were recommendations to go for the clinch and to try to work from there. With regards to the wrist locks, I find they're only going to work when you're pressing your opponent against the wall or if you're on the ground. If you're just standing up in free space, they got too much space to move to wiggle out of it. It's another crucial part of training, which is often overlooked by a lot of traditional martial arts. Right. The idea right. that you're gonna uh, sometimes be fighting with either your back against the wall or where you're pressing them against the wall and the floor, obviously. Mm. And again, it's a fight, so nothing's gonna work 100% of the time. Right. You can't have in your mind, I'm gonna get into the wall, do the wrist up, you'll be on the floor. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The more you right. drill it, the better you become at it, the more chance it will work. And let's say if it's a boxing ring, is it the same? Does it apply because there's the bounciness? Boxing ring, drive them towards the corner mm. where it's less springy, less bouncy. In the middle of the ring, then you say wrist, wrist, wrist locks probably not going to work? Yeah, the very low percentage. Right. You would have right. to be really, really good at them and the other person would have to be very, very unfamiliar with them. Yeah, that was the difficulty I had in the, in the sparring tube. In Aikido, sometimes if the person resists, and stands without moving, then yeah, I can go through the resistance, but it takes time, and here there's, there's nothing like time. <laughs> so then you might just decide to distract with a knee or something. That's it, and let's say he moves his arm somewhere to block, and then you time it where he's distracted, go for the wrist, get the takedown. There you go, nice. Once you've achieved the wrist lock takedown, and he's on his way down to the ground, you're already transitioning into a submission or strikes. Some BJJ or ground and pound? Yeah, I mean, you, you must have some sort of armbar locks where you hyperextend the elbow joint in the kido, no? Well, funny enough, we almost not. <laughs> or some sort of pin even, a pin is good. Sure, yeah, okay, a pin. Because then that um, pin then, you leave at least one arm free to strike. You're not gonna pin a good MMA guy for long, but as long as it's enough to get at least one significant strike off, then uh, it's a good thing. That's it. And you Lift. keep them, knock him off balance, drive him to the wall. Right. Strike him, Lift. straight deep strike, and strike, keep strike, striking, attack. Now Lash. strike. And go for What else did you find in that uh, first video you made that you thought you might, there might be something to it and you could use it, but you didn't quite know how to adapt it for that situation? In Aikido, there's a technique where you go for the neck 
with the arm. So I was trying to go for it, but he really knew how to resist it. Instead of going for the neck, both higher up, maybe under the nose. So again, think of disrupting the spinal alignment. Mm. At the same time, you can use your other hand at the base of his spine to collapse him this way. So it's like a scissor effect. Yeah, collapse his spine, give it a really big hit. Right here and through the head, right? So remember, not the neck, come higher up. Through inside and turn. Nice, nice. The MMA guys have really strong posture. Their necks are so strong, I prefer to manipulate the spine. You've yeah. also got the option, so you were here and here, to use your leg. If they're strong and solid, you don't just keep insisting, you quickly switch up, transition to a different move. Like, that's got to be part of the training. You go for one thing and you learn how to flow into something else. So if you get yourself back in that position where he's solid and you couldn't move him, and then have a look and think about what you could throw straight into thereafter. So there's one more technique we use in Aikido where we go for the back. But again, here I have a doubt if... You can also kick the back of the knee as you put it down or knee to the boxix. So I would also go yeah. here. Right. Yeah. Okay. And again, it's, it's, a in, it's a moment by moment thing. People are going to resist in different ways at different angles. So you have to go always choose the path of least resistance. That sounds like Aikido. <laughs> yeah. It's getting into that habit of drilling a, a flow of moves together, chaining different moves together, three moves, five moves, two moves, doesn't matter, over and over again. And then once you get good at that, you can become more and more creative. Say so I'm going in. Here, so we can resist. Didn't work, so let's... So I'm thinking about bringing that here. So in, in Aikido, we have a technique here, but that's, you know, that's the nice traditional sweet form, but I'm Instead thinking, I guess... Instead of grabbing the neck, don't grab the neck, grab the back of his skull with your right palm. Right. You have more control, more leverage, and you can pull him into the right knee. So this hit for the knee. And here in the shoulder, he feels quite strong, quite solid. So I'm thinking whether there should be an extra angle or... Yeah, but as long as you're, also, you're tipping with both arms on the skull and your left arm, you're circling clockwise. Right. And you're, yeah, you go, stepping. Right. That's it. 